Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through a couple player props I like over on Prize Picks for the Week 2 college football slate. We're going to be talking about props that I like for the full slate on Saturday. Uh, didn't make a video for the games on Friday. There's you know only a few games, um, and you know we did have an NFL game on Friday that I was kind of focused on. Um, you know, for college football, not sure if I'll be doing videos for like the Thursday and the Friday games, just because with NFL now, you know, that's going to be kind of my priority. But obviously on Saturday, there's no, usually no NFL game Saturday, and there's a full slate of college football on Saturday. So I do plan on getting videos out for college football every Saturday for the Saturday slate, and I'll probably post those usually like sometime on Friday. Right now I'm recording this video on Friday afternoon. Going to go ahead and post this on Friday afternoon. So if you're looking for my college football videos, those will typically be posted on Friday check them out on the YouTube channel when they are posted. But we got three plays to discuss for this Saturday slate, three props I'm liking over on prize picks. Now, before we do talk through these plays, guys, as always, if you enjoy these prize picks videos, if they do help you out, make sure to hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to prize picks, and if you don't have an account over on prize picks, use that promo code NOAH. When you sign up, you'll get your first, uh, excuse me, you'll get uh, $50 in promo funds when you place your first lineup. So, you play, you sign up, make a deposit, use code NOAH, play, play your first lineup, just put $5 on it. Even if you win or lose that first lineup, you'll instantly get $50 added to your account that you can then use towards you know, additional lineups. If you want to play the picks I give out in this video, you can do so. If you want to make some lineups for yourself, you can do that as well. But definitely check out Prospects, guys, if you have not yet. Prospects does have a free square available right now, as you can see on the screen. Uh, Caleb Williams, his pass yards prop is set at 0.5, and this is a free pick Prospects has given you. It's for NFL Week 1. If, even if you don't follow the NFL, just take this free square, pair it with college football plays you like. But that's another incentive to sign up right now because you know, there's a free square available. You want to be taking advantage of that. Anytime sites do discounts like this, you want to use those to your advantage. So, again, check out Prospects if you guys have not yet, and make sure to use that promo code NOAH when you do sign up. But, yeah, we got three plays to discuss for for college football for week two, it's been a pretty good start to the college football season so far. We've given out 11 total plays on this YouTube channel for college football, and we're 9-2 and two on the 11 individual plays we've given out. Let's see if we can keep that uh, keep that heater going into, into week two, guys. So first prop we're going to talk about that I like for the week two slate is going to be a rush yards prop. And the prop that I'm liking here is going to be Jamal Haynes. We're going to take Jamal Haynes for more than, I think, 84 is this line. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, let's see. Or 86 and a half rush yards. His line's actually been going up. It's I think it I want to say it opened at like 82 and a half. It's already been bet up to 86 and a half. I saw FanDuel actually has his line up at 89 and a half. We're getting it at 86 and a half on prize picks, and I do like the over here or more than 86 and a half rush yards for Jamal Haynes. And let's talk through this prop and why I like this one. Now, if you do look at Jamal Haynes' game log so far this season, he has gone under this line in both his games this season. He had 11 carries for 75 yards against Florida State. He was very efficient, averaged 6.8 yards per carry, just didn't get a ton of volume, uh, only got 11 carries. But then last week against uh, Georgia State, we did see him get some more volume, had, um, had 17 carries for 84 yards. So he was definitely more efficient uh, on the ground, or not as more efficient, but he got more volume. Wasn't as efficient, only averaged 4.9 yards per carry. But the volume should be there for Jamal Haynes. He doesn't really have a ton of competition for touches behind him. If you look at their game last week against Georgia State, the only other running backs to get carries were uh, Anthony Carey, who got four carries. And then you did see Haynes King carry the ball five times. Chad Alexander got five carries. Some of this also could have came like in garbage time. I mean, Georgia Tech was playing with a pretty big lead for most of that game last week against Georgia State. I'm not exactly sure how many carries like Jamal Haynes got late in the game because I don't know if they really needed him late in the game. But he got 17 carries last week in a you know, relatively non-competitive game. Now we have a game here against Syracuse that does project to be close. And this is also a game that projects to be high scoring. It's got a 60 and a half total. Georgia State, or excuse me, Georgia Tech is favored by three in this game. So we've got a high total game. We've got a close spread. It's also a pretty good matchup for Jamal Haynes going up against Syracuse. Syracuse has never really had a good defense. Syracuse got gashed against the run in week one. Ohio ran for 255 yards on Syracuse in week one. Anthony Tyus ran for, had 16 carries for 203 yards. And then their quarterback, Parker Navarro, had 16 carries for 33 yards as well. But I, Ohio ran all over Syracuse in week one. I think Georgia Tech should be able to move the ball on the ground efficiently in this matchup. Again, it's a high total game. It's a game that projects to be high scoring. And if we're going to see Jamal Haynes get 16, 17, 18 carries, 
He should be fairly efficient on the ground in this matchup, should be able to average around five yards per carry. Um, and with that type of volume, that should be enough to put him over this rush yards line. I was looking at two props actually for Jamal Haynes. I, I do like his over on 86 and a half rush yards. I think taking more than 18 and a half fantasy score is pretty solid as well. If you're betting on fantasy score, you want obviously touchdowns and Jamal Haynes is pretty heavily favored to get a touchdown this week. You could definitely take that too. Feel like if he goes over uh, rush yards, he probably goes over fantasy score as well. I mean, there's definitely scenarios where maybe he doesn't go over rush yards, but also goes over fantasy score if he gets like two touchdowns or something. But I think my favorite play for Jamal Haynes this week is more than 86 and a half rush yards. Like the matchup a lot here against Syracuse. The volume has been there for Jamal Haynes. And again, FanDuel, they have his line three yards higher. It's up at 89 and a half over on FanDuel. We're getting it at 86 and a half on prize picks. So that's the first prop I like for Saturday. And then the next prop I like is a fantasy score. And the prop that I like here is Ollie Gordon. We're going to take Ollie Gordon for more than 24 and a half fantasy score. So Ollie Gordon posted a big week one performance like he typically does. He, he's a guy that puts up big numbers every week against San Diego State. Had a massive game last week. 28 carries for 126 yards and three touchdowns. Also had three catches for 20 yards. So this is a running back that has probably the best workload in all of college football. Like if you just look at the volume that Ollie Gordon gets on a weekly basis, it's pretty absurd. He gets 20 plus carries like every single week. He also gets usage in the passing game. If you look at his game log last season, as the starting running back, he got 18, 21, 29, 29, 25, 33, 12 in a massive blowout against UCF, and then 25, 34, 13 in a blowout against Texas, and then 27 carries. So typically in competitive games, you're going to see Holly Gordon get like 25 carries, and he also gets usage in the passing game too. Like he'll get three, four, five receptions, and on prize picks, you do get a full point per reception. So running backs that can catch passes, that's only going to make their fantasy score upside even higher. And Ollie Gordon does everything. He gets a ton of volume. He catches passes. And he scores a lot of touchdowns. He scored 20 touchdowns last season on the ground. Also had a rushing touchdown. If you actually look on DraftKings, Ollie Gordon is minus 800 to score a touchdown this week. I mean, that's just absurd. Like, you never see guys, definitely not in the NFL. Now, in college football, it's different. But in the NFL, you never see players minus 800 to score a touchdown. Ollie Gordon is minus 800 to score a touchdown this week, and he's actually favored minus 145 to score two touchdowns. So uh, this is a guy that just, you know, he is able to find the end zone at will. Like anytime uh, Oklahoma State gets near the goal line, the ball is going to Ollie Gordon. And if you just look at Ollie Gordon's prop lines this week, he's expected to put up really big numbers. I mean, he's got a 126 and a half rush yards line. He's got a 19 and a half receiving yards line. So he's projected for about 15 fantasy points just from yards, and that's not factoring in catches. That's not factoring in touchdowns. Like we said, he's massively favored to score a touchdown here. If he gets three, four catches, that's going to add three, four additional points. And if he scores two touchdowns, well, then we're just, you know, it's a gold mine. I think very likely if Ollie Gordon scores two touchdowns, which he's actually favored to do, if he scores two touchdowns, he's very likely to go over this fantasy score line. I know it feels it feels weird put taking an over on a running back's fantasy score at 24 and a half, but Ollie Gordon is just a different animal. I mean, he went over this line in a large majority of his games last season. He just gets a ton of volume. He's probably going to get 25 carries. He's probably going to get a few receptions here. If he gets into the end zone once, he's got a good chance at going over this fantasy score line. If he gets in the end zone twice, very good chance of going over this fantasy score line. And actually looking kind of around the industry at some industry projections, Underdog, their site is half point PPR, whereas Prize Picks is full point PPR. And Underdog actually has Ollie Gordon's line set higher than Prize Picks. And that's with Underdog being less favorable of a scoring system. Again, you only get half a point per reception on Underdog, whereas on Prize Picks, you get a full point per reception. And they have their line higher. And then I was looking at some uh, college football projections, some DFS projections. Ollie Gordon's uh, college football DFS projection that I look at has him for around 29 fantasy points. So it does feel like. Prospects is a little bit lower than the industry on Ollie Gordon here. Um, and I think, you know, this is a guy that, I, you know, I like betting overs on because he's just a fun player to watch. I mean, he's so, he's just so good. He just gets so much volume. I know it's, again, it feels weird taking an over on a running back with a 24 and a half fantasy point line, but Ollie Gordon went over this line in a large majority of games last season. The games where he didn't go on or didn't go over were typically like blowouts, like he went under against Texas in the Big 12 championship, but they lost 49 to 21 that game. He went under against UCF, but they lost that game 45 to 3. So like typically 
as long as Oklahoma State doesn't get blown out, you're going to see Ollie Gordon have a good chance of going over this fantasy score line. This is definitely not a spot where we should expect them to get blown out. They're actually pretty big favorites in this game against Arkansas. Uh, right now, Oklahoma State is favored by, let's see, they're favored by 10 in this game at home. Good matchup as well. Arkansas has always been kind of a poor defensive team. Arkansas allowed uh, over 162 rush yards per game last season. So I like the matchup for Ollie Gordon as well. There's just You could check pretty much every box here. So like that as our second prop for Saturday. And then the third and final prop that I like is a uh, receiving yards prop. And we're going to talk about Luke uh, Lakey, or Lakey, uh, Le Lechey. I don't know how to say his name exactly, but Luke Lakey. We're going to take him for more than 41 and a half receiving yards. Now, this is another line that has kind of been moving throughout the week. I think it opened at like 32, 33 and a half, and it's already up to 41 and a half. So a lot of people are on Luke Lakey's overs this week. And it's a line that I like as well. So Luke Lakey, he's kind of been injured for a lot of his you know, kind of collegiate career. He only played in two games last season because he was injured. Like he played two games and he got injured, didn't play the rest of the season. But he was really good in the two games he played last season. Had seven catches for 73 yards, had three catches for 58 yards. Comes into this season fully healthy. And he was really good in their week one game against Illinois State. Now, Illinois State didn't really put up much of a fight. Illinois State got blown out the... I, Iowa won that game 40 to nothing. So last week was not a game where Iowa really had to throw the ball. They didn't really have to put their foot on the gas pedal. I mean, I, I, I didn't watch the game, but I'm pretty confident Luke Lakey didn't even play the whole game because it was a blowout. But he had six catches for 63 yards last week. And we've seen Iowa be more like pass heavy. Now, Iowa's always been a very run heavy team, but now they do have Cade McNamara, who is coming into the season fully healthy. He, uh, McNamara was on the team last season, but he got injured. But in the games that he played, he did actually have some decent numbers passing, and they did actually let him throw the ball. Like, he had 30 pass attempts against uh, Utah State. He had 22 pass attempts against Iowa State last season, 19, 14 against Penn State. Now, Iowa is a definitely a run-first team. They're not a team that's going to go out there and throw the ball 40 times. But in typically in games that are competitive, games that maybe I was playing with a little bit of a or playing a little bit from behind, you definitely will see them throw the ball 20, 25 times. And Luke Lakey should be probably the number one target on this Iowa team. He's probably likely to lead the team in targets this season as long as he stays healthy. Again, last week and only less like last week, Cade McNamara threw the ball 31 times, which is actually a decent amount for him. He threw the ball 31 times, and you did see Lakey get six receptions. He was definitely one of the top targets for Cade McNamara last week. So I like betting on Lakey, you know, coming into this game fully healthy. He has shown the ability to produce when he's been healthy. It, you know, again, he was injured for a lot last season, but he's coming into the season healthy, put up some good numbers in week one. Like him to put up some good numbers here against Iowa State. This is a game that doesn't have a very high total. Typically, every Iowa game is going to have a low total just because of how Iowa plays. Iowa, again, they're a run first team. They're a slow paced team they're you know they've historically been a good defensive team as well like this game only has a 35 and a half total but it does have a close spread three point spread so this is definitely a game where Iowa should at least have to put their keep their foot on the gas pedal I mean they won't be able to pull their starters like they were last week in a big blowout so I like uh, Luke Lakey to get more than 41 and a half receiving yards here again this line was l way lower to begin the week it was at like 33 and a half 32 and a half it's been bet up a lot but I still think at 41 and a half, it looks pretty good. I think we could definitely see Lakey get 50 plus yards here. And even if you want to take a shot on his demon line, don't know if the payout on this is really good. I'd have to do the math on it. But if you want to take him for like 50 plus or 60 plus yards on sports books, I think that's definitely something you could look to do if you're getting some good payouts on those. But for prize picks, we're going to take him for more than 41 and a half receiving yards. So these are the three props, guys, that we're going to roll with for Saturday's college football slate. Now, I'll have plenty of other plays over on Patreon. I've, I've already posted some college football plays I like for this week over on Patreon. So if you guys do enjoy these prospects videos, if they help you out, if you want more prospects plays from me, I do provide those on Patreon. You can check that out linked down below in the description. But as always, appreciate you guys watching the videos and supporting the content. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And again, guys, if you don't have an account on PrizePix, sign up. Use promo code NOAA. Place your first lineup, you'll instantly get $50 in promo funds added to your account when you use that promo code NOAA. So check out Prize Picks if you have not yet. But good luck this week, guys. Enjoy your college football Saturday. Let's make some money on Saturday, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.